Okay, we just had a quick setup for the hurdles and we're going to the second part. Just a couple of hurdle drills you can do um, as wall drills. So Hudson's going to um, stand there and drive, do three reps each side. So he's going to drive up fast on his lead leg. Okay, go Hudson. Okay. Okay, strike his arms as well, other leg. Okay, now he's gonna step, okay, have one leg up, he's gonna drive it down and step up. Okay, that's it, one, two, three, and the other leg, drive it down, and impact the wall as you would with your lead leg. All right, now he's gonna put his hands on the edge of the barbecue and he's gonna do some trailing leg drills. So he's gonna lift his leg up to the side, okay. Yep, and straight down, okay. Hudson's lead leg when he actually hurdles is his right leg and his trail leg is obviously his left leg. Now he's gonna to attempt to do a good demo on the other side. <laughs> yep, not quite getting his heel up enough. Okay, not quite as good that side. Okay, but we always, can't emphasize this enough, we always work both sides. Because when you're off the middle of a hurdles race and something goes wrong, you either hit a hurdle or you get tired towards the end of a race and you haven't practiced the other side, well, bad luck. You're in, you're in, you're in trouble and you're going to be high jumping over the hurdles rather than running. Hurdle, short hurdles, sprint hurdles is a sprint race. Okay, and uh, you got to get from point A to point B. Uh, as quickly as possible. So we set up some hurdles, um, 68 centimeters. This is the um, long hurdles height for Hudson, and he's gonna do some lead leg drills first, just on one side. Okay, so he's gonna do a lead leg drill on one side. Okay. And on the other side. Notice we always go over hurdles the way they're gonna fall over, because if you go the other way, um, bad things happen. Okay, now he's going to do a trail leg drill, both sides. Other side, don't care. Okay. So he leans, gets his arm right. Hudson's a bent arm hurdler, not a straight arm hurdler. We won't debate the merits of holding your arm out straight or bending it, whatever works. Okay, so trailing leg, that's it. Okay, trailing leg. Training leg, yep. So his his left his <laughs> left leg is better on his uh, training leg. Okay, but we still practice both. All right. Um, now we do the lead and training leg. Okay, so through the middle, pretty narrow here. You've got to have good hip flexibility. Get that knee up high. Get the foot over. I would I would die doing this drill. I I reckon I'd kill myself. But Hudson's a real hurdler. And the other leg. We'll see what he's made of now on the other side. Okay, so now there's some just basic hurdle drills. Do the side one, the side side leg swings. Okay. Okay. And you can do that both ways because you're not gonna knock over the hurdles or keep yourself or tang yourself up. So now we're gonna space them out a little bit. Good way of doing it. Okay, you leave the spacing there and you pull the middle one out and then go to the whatever spacing you're going to do. Okay. Well, we'll see how it goes with the pole in the way. Hopefully we won't uh, crash into it. Okay, and so what you're doing is you're working out from short spacing the hurdles into longer spacing the hurdles. And progressively over the pre-season and season, you actually move out to the actual height you would, um, your, your race height. Okay, there's no enormous rush to do that. Okay, and you would use lower hurdles and shorter spacing and you would incrementally build up until you're at race height. And you don't may do two or three hurdles, okay? And then you would add in progressively more hurdles um, 
towards the sharper end of the season. All right, hurdles is difficult because we, in Australia, we have schools, we have LA Vic, we have, if you're in under 14s and above, you have seniors. And unfortunately, all the hurdle heights and spacing uh, are not the same, all right? And you may have in the transition between um, the years, because we our season starts in October, first half of the season to December, and then we have the second half of the season, January to March, uh, guess what? You may change hurdle to hurdle heights mid-season, which is a real pain. Such is life, we live with it, um, and it's a constant thing. Actually, once they get towards higher hurdles in their uh, mid to later teens, then we actually go, well, what do you want to do? You want to do seniors, you want to do schools, you want to do uh, LA Vic, and they concentrate on one. Um, okay, so that's just part of the pain you go through with hurdles. Okay, Hudson, show us some drills. Okay. Go on, negotiate on the pole really well. <laughs> and the other side. Okay, so we're taking a couple of steps over the hurdles, or between the hurdles, okay? Training lead drill, leaning down, striding his arms, pretending he's doing a lead leg drill over there. You can turn that into a skipping one as well, so you can actually do the same strides you would do between, between the hurdles, okay? Last drill, and that'll do us. Surprise me. Okay, that'll do. So he was working on his uh, real side there. And again, you would um, start going longer and longer and running over the hurdles, okay? It's a sprinting event. You don't want a high jump. You actually want to drive and sprint over the hurdles. Okay, it doesn't get really hard until, uh, you know, the, the two highest heights in sprint hurdles. And then uh, you really, look, if you're doing hurdles by then, you're a hurdle specialist and you've done it for quite a few years. Uh, it can be quite hard to build up. The uh, longer hurdles, the 200, 300, and 400, as they progressively build up from juniors to seniors, um, they're always um, lower than the short sprint hurdles. Thanks, Hudson. We'll, we'll see you again next week. Thanks. Wave to the camera. No. Okay, thanks.